We, uh, we don't have slides because we tried three laptops and we can't get it hooked up here. And uh, I, I'm pretty worried about uh, doing this without them, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. Um, so a little bit about who I am. Um, I'm Kathy Fletcher. My background is that I spent four years with Connections um, as the project manager and technical director of Connections. And there are a variety of lessons that I learned. Connections, if you don't know Connections, is an open repository. Anybody can publish learning materials to Connections, and anybody can view and take and use, repurpose those, those learning materials. And that's where I spent four years of, of time. One of the things that I learned there was that uh, you really want to concentrate on your strengths. And Connections did try to be everything to everybody. Um, and so, there was a technical philosophy that, you know, if you had something you wanted to do, some project you wanted to do, well, of course you would come to Connections and do it. Um, and uh, that doesn't always work because that doesn't empower the community to build new tools that are going to interact with, with your system. So for this last uh, half a year and, and coming up, I've been a fellow with the Shuttleworth Foundation. And basically the foundation funded me to spend a year or uh, spend a year looking at how to create an ecosystem of tools and services around open remixable repositories like Connections. So we're still trying. Yeah, we're trying. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to page down. You can keep trying, but I, I have to remember where I am. So the, the fellowship is about creating an OER roadmap for an ecosystem around OER. And it's really a technical plumbing kind of issue. Now I'm going to try to keep the talk a little bit higher than the plumbing level, but it really is about plumbing. Um, and, the, and the thing about plumbing is the plumbing itself is boring, but the glass of water at the end is really nice. And so that's what we're trying to get to. And um, the, the there are a lot of folks around here who are, look at, who are thinking about interoperability and, and, and plumbing issues like I am. In particular, I'm concentrating on one piece of it because that was the piece that was completely missing at Connections. So the piece I'm pu concentrating on is publishing. So I've got some great content. I want to publish it to open repositories. How do I do that without having to go learn their tools? So the, you know, the other sides of plumbing are search and discovery. Am I hearable? I don't even know if I'm on or not. OK, well, whatever it is, it's working. If I'm too loud, tell me and I'll turn something off. So, um, so I'm concentrating on these remixable OER repositories that you would be seeing right here. So they would be repositories like connections. <laughs> visualize, visualize these repositories. So repositories like connections where anybody can do textbook-like material. Uh, repositories like um, open assessment banks, and there are a few around. There's one full marks. Um, there are various other people looking at. I want to get great test questions, and I want to bank them and make them available for not only teachers and learners, but also for people who are creating interesting tools and assessments and learning analytics from them. Um, something like the open <coughs> library that's collecting, you know, a page for every book ever written. And any of those books that can be gotten in an open way, the library is going to be a way for you to get them. And they're also doing things like allowing you to check out books that are not open. Uh, worked examples. One of the things that was uh, an example that um, Jim Shelton gave. That would be another piece that it's, it's, a, it's very handy to have a bank of really nicely done worked examples that you can then insert into your own content. Things like DuraSpace, all those institutional archives, DSpace, ePrint, Archive AR, XIVE, um, those kind of repositories, Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons. We have something, but not what I'm talking about. <laughs> OCW, uh, YouTube, all of these repositories in various states of openness. Uh, and the real thing that I'm working on is Making those repositories remixable, Connections is remixable, but you have to buy into the entire Connections philosophy. So how can I build some plumbing that makes that remixability easier to support? Anything? 
for a second. <laughs> as as it mirrors <laughs> mode now, it looks like. Go. Oh yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. We need to do mirror mode, yeah. and we'll be done because that was my uh, desktop. Oh, and now we're like at the end of that slide. <laughs> I can't see anything. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't. It's <laughs> okay. You have to get me access. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We were starting to get some people. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we should just throw your laptop on. <laughs> just keep going. Maybe we'll, we'll try to. We were so out. close. I really think that we were one we were so step close. from it. Yeah, um, good. When you uh, had let's, let's get, uh, when you had the purple here. Okay. Then I think all we needed to do was do the mirror monitors. Okay, that's system. Preferences, right? And monitors? Yeah. Check. Same image, all monitors. And back to two. a remixable repository that's easy to take content from, reuse it, and publish content back. So modularity helps a lot. And if you think of something like uh, test banks and worked examples, they have inherent modularity. And that makes them each of those individual problems is quite reusable. So that modularity is important because then you can hook different modules together and create a new whole. The other thing that we want is something that's pluggable, that's in some sort of editable format so that I can hook these pieces together. And even more important, so that I can take it and I can translate it from English to Spanish. I can add a new example into it. I can create, you know, I can hook it up to chemical models that I found from somewhere else. So that pluggability. And then something that we all know about, you know, you need some ability to, to um, as a community, share content and know that it's safe to share if you're trying to do more than you know, fair use or fair dealing. And then one other piece that I think um, is important for teachers and learners to, you know, to different extents, but some sort of permanence of that content that you know it's not going to disappear. I think things like YouTube have it good enough. You know, it's permanent enough. But the old web where it was somebody's personal web page, some teacher's personal web page, and they had something really fantastic but they switch schools or whatever, or they stop, you know, and that blog disappears. That, I think we need a little bit more than that sort of permanence. We need a little more than the internet in, provides inherently. And once you have this kind of remixability, then you also have the ability to learn anywhere because you have content that can be put together, it's pluggable, you can create an ebook out of it, you can see it online, you can work with accessibility tools, you can use daisy readers, you can use braille readers and you can print it out in PDF. So those are the, some of the wins you get by supporting remixability. So I'm going to go through all of these. I don't need to read all of that. The idea is once we have some remixable open repositories, then what we can do around that is build this ecosystem of other tools that do not have to live in the repository itself. That's one of the things that I learned from Connections. Connections was not going to do everything. It needed to be able to support other tools and services around it. So one of, the, one of the big things is that you want this editable format in your repository. Maybe you're supporting XML. Maybe you're supporting um, HTML. But <laughs> <laughs> Wow, we are not having good luck with that. OK. So, so I'm just going to describe some of these kinds of services. So let's say that uh, we have ways to uh, talk to these open repositories. If we have good machine tools, good plumbing to talk to these open repositories, then we can think of an editor that would be able to publish wherever you want to publish. So I create my content. Let me create it in Word. Let me create it in Google Docs. Let me create it in TinyNC, an HTML editor, wherever I am. Let me create it in my LMS. 
then I want to be able to at some point decide where I want to publish this to. It's, it's, I, I'm happy with it. I want to go ahead and publish it and share it. I should be able to publish it to Connections. I should be able to take my videos and publish them to YouTube, Vimeo, the Berkeley Video Service, wherever. And I want tools that will help me do that. And I also want tools that will help me translate. And I want to be able to get content out of those open repositories, translate it, and then push it back in. And have that connection between, hey, here's the originating language version, and here are the 20 other versions of this in different languages. I want to be able to find them from each other. I want to have tools that help me to export between these different uh, repositories. And, oh, we have five minutes, okay. So we're going to go through, so I want to have all of these abilities to talk to um, printing services, <coughs> journals, uh, social media services, and uh, feedback. So what I'm trying to do is close that loop and make publishing easy. And um, the, uh, the, the piece that I've concentrated on is, okay, is there a standard out there that's already pretty close? to being able to give you a simple way to publish to repositories. And what I found is that there's a standard called SWORD, which is Simple Web Service for Offering Repository Deposit. They, they had to work kind of hard to get that, that in there. <laughs> and it turns out you really don't want your standard named after a real word like that, because when you Google for SWORD, well, you get a lot of other stuff. But anyway, it's a nice, simple standard, and it's built on the standard that's used to publish to blogs, AdamPub. So that gives you a huge development base uh, around the, these couple of standards. Um, and SWORD has a lot of different implementers already. So um, ePrints, DuraSpace, DSpace, Archive, the uh, preprint location, um, and it has lots of organizations that are contributing to it. Especially in the European community, there's a lot of adoption of SWORD. But the, the technical committee around that has lots of different energy from different groups. And for developers, if you're trying to write a client that's going to talk to any repository that implements SORT so that you can help somebody to publish, um, you've got a lot of toolkits to start with. Whatever your language of choice, you can use. Uh, there are libraries for PHP, Ruby, Java, and Python all already built and available. So what I've done with the fellowships, Step one, pick this spec. There are probably some things that are wrong with it. Step two, adapt it to OER just a little bit, because SWORD is really, was, it, it came out of the repository, the institutional archive, uh, kind of more of a library-oriented group of uh, uh, projects. And so it's really about, I've got something, I'm going to deposit it, and then it's there in my library for safekeeping forever. And it wasn't as much about, oh, I might want a new version of that, or I might want to adapt something that already is there and make a derived copy that still knows about its parent. So a couple of little pieces added to that, to the sword spec in order to do that. And then the third step was to implement it in at least one open repository. And uh, I implemented, or I uh, had a development team implement that for connections. Of course, I know connections, so I had connections to connections. <laughs> so now connections, unlike you know all the 10 years past, you can publish to connections without ever even coming to connections. You can use different tools using this, this API that helps to do that. Now step three, and that's the piece that I would love to have some time to talk with folks out here, mm -hmm. is building tools that actually use that API, that, that, that plumbing, to get into open repositories and also getting more repositories to implement the same plumbing so that tools can talk to multiple repositories at once. We have a couple of things going. We have a, uh, a client that helps connections authors um, create their content in whatever format they start in, Google Docs, Word, etc. Transform it outside connections into the connections format and take a look. Does it look good? Has the transform worked well? and then finally publish it. And they can also get a new version. You can go out and find somebody's content, say, I want to derive a copy of that. It'll do that for you. You can edit it and then push it back. And then a simple translation tool that says, OK, go give me the public URL for this content. I'll get a candidate translation for you. And then give you a side-by-side -side view and let you fill that out. And now you can publish it back to Connections, and it'll keep the, the, uh, the 
link to the original source. Um, and then some simple things like helping <coughs> projects that have been content producers get their content done more efficiently. Uh, there's a publisher that is developing on a development server and needs to migrate all their content, so this plumbing helps to do that more efficiently. Um, Teachers Without Borders has a hundred Spanish translations of content that's already on the web. So we're going to use the API to get all of those translations hooked up with their original sources. Um, Open Course Library, and you're going to, their talks later on, they are publishing 80-something, um, I never get the number exactly right, approximately 80 open courses. Those will all be on, the, the first half of those are using the API to script them and put them on connections so you can find them easy, easily there, see the syllabus, see if you want to use that course, and then download it into your learning management system. And uh, I had some cool pictures. Um, I talked with a guy last night who works with Peer-to-Peer -peer University, and he did a mashup. What? Well, I didn't even talk to him. He just emailed me, and we emailed back and forth a little bit. And he created um, a Peer-to-Peer -peer University linking to connections modules. Um, and then, you know, some of these ideas of dual publishing. If you're creating really high quality content and you have a branded experience and you're, you're bringing people to your site, but there are artifacts within that that would be incredibly useful in an open repository, like open questions, worked examples, textbook chapters. You could use these kinds of, this kind of API plumbing to publish pieces of that content out into open repositories. So. Those are some of the ideas, and I would be happy to take questions if we have time. Um, uh, <laughs> we use most of our time with technical. So, okay. <laughs> so. Okay. so that's kind of the speed version of uh, where I'm trying to get. So I'm very interested in talking with other projects about content that you have and that you're trying to get published and figuring out ways to, to help make that easier.